What's up, everybody? John Eric Poli here with my MMA news, and today's guest will be fighting Victor Martinez at UFC on ABC5. Those fights will be from Jacksonville, Florida. Fight date, of course, June 24th. It's great talking with today's guest, Trevor Peak. Trevor, it's always a pleasure, my man. Thank you, as always, for being here, making time for uh, for me and for our website and doing these. Always appreciate the time, man. Oh, yeah, man. I always enjoy it. I appreciate you guys reaching out and getting me on, man. It means the world to me. So, man, let's start right here, right? You're 1-0 in the UFC, and so far to this point, we've kind of had this reoccurring question, like, has it sunk in? Has it sunk in? Now, I I feel like it has to now have sunk in at this point, right? First, we were talking about you just being on the Contender Series, getting that contract, getting the first fight, all that now behind you. You're on the roster. You have a win under your belt. I'm sure it's all kind of, you know, kind of a little, still a little surreal, but it has to be a good feeling that it's all sunk in now. Oh, man, yeah, it's most definitely sunk in. Uh, I mean, I've, I've caught people, like, trying to sneak, take pictures of me in public and stuff like that. I, must, I mean, I'd say 95% of the time that I go out now to, you know, eat with friends and stuff, I'm having people come up and congratulate me and, you know, want to take a picture and stuff like that, man. So it most definitely feels real now. It's a very, very much just a dream of mine, man. It's just uh, really blessed. I'm a blessed individual. For sure, man. And uh, now finally, right, a big opportunity here for you. You've always wanted to fight in front of a crowd. You're going to get to do that. It's a big card that's going to be on ABC. Just how excited are you for this massive opportunity in your career? Oh, man, I've been ready to get in front of that UFC crowd for a long time, man. I went back in 2018 and watched uh, Wonder Boy and uh, Pettis fight in Nashville. And I stood in there that day, man, and I seen how crazy the crowd was and just, you know, got to watch as a fan, you know, as a spectator. And I just told myself in that moment, you know, I was like, man, I'm going to be down in there one of these days. You know, one of these days I'm going to be that man in the arena looking up at all these folks. And, you know, I just promised myself that day that I'd, I'd try my best to make it. And then, you know, the, come the 24th, I'll be standing in the middle of the world, at the center of the world, man, everybody watching. I'll get to look up and say 15,000 fans. I'm just... I'm so blessed, dude. I'm so excited and just, you know, over the moon. And the fact that these cards, too, are, are going to be on ABC, and it's not like this happens all the time, too, just the fifth time so far in UFC history that a, a card's going to be on ABC. Uh, does that ever sink into you uh, at all? Did you ever think about any of that? Because obviously your story is incredible, just from being where you were at at one time in your life to now fighting on a national platform like ABC it has to be pretty cool. Oh, yeah, man. Anything to get more eyes on me, you know, and be able to tell my story and, you know, people to, you know, witness witness me in that cage. You know, I'm all for more eyes, you know, so I'm just, you know, thankful that I'm on the card that's going to be on ABC. It's just super cool, man. A lot of people, you know, they ain't subscribed to ESPN Plus and maybe not even know about the UFC, but they'll be scrolling through their TV that day and run across it and just stop. So I'm just, I'm, I think it's super cool, man. Super fortunate. Now, we mentioned about the crowd before and you saying how awesome, you know, it was back in 2018 when you were watching uh, the fights and saying that you were going to be there one day. Well, one of the things that I know about you just from interviewing you so far, you would always tell me like your best performances came in front of the crowd because you were able to feed off of their energy. So just how much are you looking forward to it? that end of it, that you're going to be able to feed off their energy, all the cheers, getting you all amped up, all that sort of stuff? Um, look, I can't tell you, and I don't know how to describe the feelings I'm having towards it, man. I'm just so excited about it. I'm most definitely an entertainer, man. And when that crowd starts chanting peak or starts getting loud, man, I just, I can't hardly contain myself. I'm just, uh, I'm sure this will be a, another, another, uh, wild performance, man. I, I just can't hardly help myself, especially in front of a crowd, but yeah, I, I definitely feed off of it, man. You can, you can see the energy change whenever, whenever that crowd starts getting loud. It's just, I'm ready. And you have so many people behind you in your corner cheering you on. Well, the fact that these fights are in Florida kind of plays right into your favor, too. Obviously, being a guy from the South, you told me uh, before we started uh, this interview process here when we were off air that you have about 200 people, if I believe I heard that right, coming down to support you. That's, first off, incredible. So you're going to have definitely a lot of cheers inside the octagon that night. Just, But what does that mean to you to have so many people behind you supporting you and all those people? willing to make the trip to Jacksonville to cheer you on like that I mean it's just a blessing man I almost at times like uh how can I describe this I almost feel like undeserving you know of the support that I have really I mean I just sit around sometimes and just plum get emotional you know I'll even cry at times when I'm by myself just thinking of 
you know, how I flipped the narrative, man. I went from a boy that, you know, had the whole community talking poorly about him and rightfully so to, you know, now I got little kids wearing my shirts and people sending me, wanting me to send them autographs and stuff like that, man. So it's, it's just, I'm just blessed, man. All right, man. So we have all this, you know, very touching and warming stuff that we opened up with. Let's get into the actual specifics now about this fight here. Let's start with training camp. I know you're starting to put the final touches on it right now as we're recording this. Uh, just how's your camp been so far and how you feeling? I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> At I least you're honest. Tired. Yeah, I am, man. I've got about I've got two black eyes, whole body's bruised up and scratched up. Man, I've put myself through a, through a heck of a training camp and I'm ready to start tapering down and letting my body, you know, regroup and everything. But as far as camp goes, man, it's been solid. I've had some new training partners come in, give me some different looks. And I've been, I mean, I've, I've gotten used to sparring people that's, you know, 30 to 50 pounds heavier than me, man. So I'm thinking when I get in there with Victor Martinez, man, I, I've done, I've done felt all the power I've needed to fail throughout this camp, man. So I just don't know what he has to offer as far as power and stuff goes that I haven't felt already. So one of the big things, too, like with you and your fighting career so far, anybody that's followed it, is like each time you get inside the octagon or inside of a cage, you get better and better and better and better each time that we see you. Uh, just talk about that growth of the game. Obviously, it has to be a big shout out to the gym, the partners and everybody there because it's pretty incredible. And have you seen even more growth uh, with this camp and that you're expecting an even better performance this time than the last time out? Yeah, man, I'm evolving. I mean, every time I get in there, I'm significantly significantly making changes, and that's all due to, you know, my the team, the coaches, and teammates that I have around me, man. I mean, they're turning me into an absolute unit in there. So, you know, it's a, I'm a hard fighter to figure out, and, you know, the, the beautiful thing about it is, man, is I still – I'm still a lot better than the world even knows. I mean, I, I'm I'm a lot more technical. I have a lot more skills, a lot more weapons than than anybody really knows. And and once I figure out how to contain all this chaos and this just energy, this violent energy inside myself, man. Once I once I figure out how to contain it and use it, you know, applicable at times and not just be that way the whole time, the whole fight. The world really is in trouble, man. Because I'm I'm a force to be reckoned with, and that violence is it's hard to deal with, and that pressure. It's just I don't give you time to think in there. All right. So now we've talked training camp. We've talked about growth and involve, uh, the evolution of your game and everything. But one thing that I saw on your Instagram, I believe that it was on, uh, pretty unique. I've never saw this done before. Did you catch a hawk? Oh, yeah, man. Yeah, I caught a hawk. <laughs> I've caught a few hawks, man. I've got several pictures. I don't know how. I don't know. I mean, I don't know how I always end up in a position where I can catch a hawk. But for some reason, I think I've caught about four. But, yeah, man, I put some leather gloves on and had a, it, it got inside this big old, like, I didn't just catch it out here. Just It got inside this big old, like, pen thing, man. And I ended up, I put some leather gloves on and found a fish in that, man. And I ran that thing around that pen until I caught him. <laughs> Okay, but, explain this process to everybody that's out there because it, it's a pretty unique thing. As far as I know, I, whenever I see hawks, they're always in the air with their big long arms just floating around. Like the fact they're even on the ground and everything. I mean, like, is it like a, a, a process that's like you know they're going to be there? Is it just random luck? Like, well, explain this to everybody. It's so random, man. It's honestly just completely random. I, I have no idea why, but for some reason in my life, I've had just random experiences where I've stumbled up on a hawk and have been fortunate enough to catch it. I, I think I've I think four, man. I think I've caught four. It's it's wild. <laughs> I've caught all kinds of things, man. It's, I don't know. Yeah. I'm a wild well, I guess man. we could call you the, the hawk whisperer. Then you have a little secret to uh, to, to getting they want to come to you, at least anyway, because it's pretty awesome. I, I don't think most people either could say they've ever caught a hawk in their life. But yeah. anyway, back to the fight game here for a moment. Let's talk about your opponent uh, here now a little bit. Just what have you seen out of him and what are you expecting on fight night? I mean, I expect a good fight. I've seen some good things out of him, but I've also, you know, seen some tendencies that I ultimately believe I can really capitalize on, man. But he's game. Um, I think, you know, I, if I was him, I'd be trying to get me down to the ground, man, and not engage in a firefight with me. But, you know, in his past fights, he, he's he got a little bit of that brawler mentality in him, so he, he'll engage in a firefight. So, you know, I'm just, you know, I, I wouldn't do that if I was him. But, you know, I welcome him with open arms if he wants to go that route. But, you know, I'm just, I'm so ready to get in there, man. <laughs> well, I guess if that's going to be the matchup you're kind of looking at there, I guess i got to ask this question. Could the fans expect a fight of the night performance or a uh, definitely a bonus-worthy performance out of you once again? 
they didn't expect a, a knockout than that performance. <laughs> I don't, and part of the night performances, they they take a little longer to regroup, man. They take a lot longer to heal from. And I'm trying to I'm trying to do some big things this year, so I'm gonna get in and get the job done and get out healthy and you know get right back into the gym and hopefully get something else planned up soon. Yeah, I'm glad that you brought that up because I was going to ask you too. I know you're a guy that likes staying active. This is the second fight uh, of the year for you here. Uh, obviously, you're looking to get a knockout. You're looking to get out of there early. What's kind of the layout for the year? You think you get two more in by the end of the year? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, that's 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 the goal, man. I would like to, I'd like to hopefully, you know, I've got this one lined up and then get one more and then that would put me at, you know, hopefully renegotiating my contract, getting a little bit better pay and then maybe knock one, you know, knock another one out before the end of the year, you know. Awesome, man. A lot of big stuff on the horizon. Uh, it's been a pleasure as always speaking with you. You have such an incredible story. We're looking forward to uh, seeing the next part of this journey here. Uh, Trevor, just last thing before you head out as always, uh, social media, management, anything that you got to plug, uh, anybody you didn't give a shout out to yet that you haven't done so, any of that good stuff, floor is yours, man. Take it away. Sir, thank you. I just want to thank, you know, my team behind me here, the Gogi Combatives, all my coaches, you know, Matt Harris, Sterling Peace, Larry Scott, and then my striking coach, Jeff Powell, just, man, they're, I wouldn't be who I am without them. You know, everybody that supports me in this journey, man, y'all are my heart, and I can't thank you guys enough. Y'all are, y'all, y'all keep this old boy going. Um, Yeah, I thank my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, man. I mean, it's a, uh, it's remarkable the things that he's doing in my life and where he's, where he's brought me to, and I mean, I've even – I've just had a film crew leave this past week. They was here shooting a little bit, like, a short documentary on me to put it in, like, you know, content uh, in the prison systems for inmates. So, I mean, I'm just – I'm just over the moon with everything I got going on, man. And uh, social media is just Trevor Peak MMA on the Instagram, and then I think Twitter's Trevor Peak underscore MMA. But, yeah, you guys go give me a follow and uh, tune in, man. I'm excited for – I'm excited for to watch, so – 